Welcome to a brief tutorial on the clinical applications of Precision Seating Solutions PS256 Pressure Mapping and Imaging System. This tutorial will walk you through the various uses and clinical applications of the PS256, as well as provide you with several outside-of-the-box uses for the system and tips to including the PS256 into billable clinical treatment. This clinical applications tutorial may be used in conjunction with our previous tutorial on the features of the PS256, which is also available on our website, www.pressuremapping256.com. Let's get started. Refer to the previous tutorial for specific details on software use, as well as turning on or off the features we are about to discuss. First, as always, it is important to ensure the interpolation feature is enabled. This feature will allow the user to have the most ideal color blend resulting in the best image. Generally, this feature remains selected while the system is in use. The PS256 pressure mapping system will display via a live feed the amount and location of the pressure being exerted from the client into the seating surface. This system is commonly used in skilled nursing facilities, group homes, assisted living facilities, inpatient rehab settings, and via independent end users to assist in the troubleshooting process and provide immediate solutions to seating concerns. As you know, a neutral pelvis, as displayed in the center of the image to the left, is preferred in regards to positioning. When a client is in a neutral position, the pressure map image, as seen on the right, should be similar to what you see here, with the femurs displaying equal pressure distribution, as well as pressure balanced nicely amidst both ischial tuberosities. If the client settles into a posterior pelvic tilted position, as seen on the right-hand side of the image to the left, the client rolls into a posterior pelvic tilt, and as you'll see with the pressure mapping image, the pressure quickly shifts to the back, sacral region of the individual, and this is often the cause of sacral skin breakdown. You'll also note the increase in pressures within that sacral region as this transition occurs. The assessor is often surprised to find that even a very small amount of posterior pelvic tilt can result in significant breakdown. Often, if, go, if it goes unnoticed, it is not until the pressure mapping is implemented that the increased pressure is discovered and the problem is rectified. When the client settles into an anterior pelvic tilt position, as you can see on the far side of the image to the left, the resulting image will present as you see on the PS256's display. The pressure will shift off of the ischial tuberosities to the femurs, thus reducing the pressure distribution under the contact area and increasing the pressure under the distal femurs. Again, often this goes unnoticed until pressure mapping is implemented. In regards to positioning, the PS256 is an extremely valuable tool in the assessment of pelvic obliquities. A pelvic obliquity is present when one ischial tuberosity is higher or lower than the other. It frequently results in notable pressure issues and skin breakdown under the low side of the pelvis. As depicted in the image to the left, when the client presents with a pelvic obliquity, in this case a left-sided pelvic obliquity, his pressure mapped image will appear as you see on the pressure mapping image here, with significant increased pressure under that low side, thus creating the potential for skin breakdown. After identifying the pelvic obliquity, use your hands to reposition the client's pelvis. As you reposition the pelvis, the PS256 will provide immediate feedback as to the degree of adjustment which is required and what form of buildup or adjustment to the seating system or cushion would be required to neutralize that pelvis. If the evaluator is seeking to identify 
whether the ischial tuberosities or contact area of the client will be comfortable and fit appropriately into the contact area of the cushion, oftentimes the distance tool can grant this information. The evaluator may simply use the distance tool to measure the width between the ischial tuberosities as seen here to ensure proper fit within the potential cushion. The peak pressure boxes are quite helpful in determining the presence of a severity or the severity of a pelvic obliquity. With the peak pressure box feature on, place the peak pressure boxes over both ischial tuberosities as you see here. The peak pressure box will allow the user to identify and specifically and precisely exactly pinpoint the ischial tuberosity in question and adjust the seating surface as needed. In addition to the above, sometimes the client will present with distal femur pressure as you see here. When a client presents with distal femur pressure as evidenced in the picture to the right, this may be indicative of a seat depth with a, which is too short, thus putting increased pressure on the distal femur as a result of the distal leg hanging off of a shortened seat. It could be a seat to floor height which is too high, resulting in increased distal femur pressure when the client attempts to self-propel with his or her feet. If the seat to floor height is too high, adequate heel stir strike will not be accomplished, but often increased distal femur pressure will be present as you see here. The peak value scale, as noted on the left side of the software screen, is often used to select the appropriate color sequence. When using this system to incorporate images into letters of medical necessity or use with justification, the peak value scale can oftentimes be a valuable tool. In terms of clinical application, this adjustment is often used to provide the client with feedback on how successful his or her manual pressure shifts are being performed. For example, a client may feel as though they are performing adequate pressure shifts, yet they continue to have breakdown. If this is a, is a situation, place the client on the pressure mapping system and set the peak value scale to where some redness is visible. Have them perform their, their uh, manual pressure shifts. If the client's baseline appears similar to what you've currently seen, ask them to perform a manual pressure shift again. When they do so, the evaluator should see a notable change in coloration, as you see here, or the complete removal of pressure, as you see here. If you do not see adequate change in coloration during a manual pressure shift, this means the client is not removing pressure adequately, even though they feel as though they are. If this is the case, turn the laptop display so the, the client can see their pressure map image. Ask them to repeat the manual pressure shift, as you see here, and indicate the lack of color change. Provide them with instruction on the proper method to manually pressure shift and allow them to see the coloration difference when the pressure shift is performed properly. Above the peak pressure selection tool on the upper left hand side of the screen is the center of mass tool. When selected, you'll see the client's center of mass on a continually updating basis. This is a fantastic tool to implement into billable therapeutic treatment time for clinicians and clients who've experienced stroke or other diagnoses which have led to, to decreased sitting balance. Historically, as a therapist, we've often placed the client on the therapy mat, as you see to your left, and placed a large floor-length mirror in front of the individual. Oftentimes, we'll have the client sit on the mat and encourage them to use their core muscles to pull themselves into a neutral sitting position, therefore addressing their lack of sitting balance. Using the mirror as biovisual feedback to encourage the neutral position, we would continue to encourage the client to pull themselves into a neutral position, despite the fact that the client now has to look at their post-CVA self in the mirror during this treatment. 
in light of the fact that we are seeing an increased amount of clients who are technologically savvy via smartphones, tablets, and similar technologies, the incorporation of Precision's PS256 pressure mapping system is a natural implementation into treatment. To incorporate the PS256 into a billable treatment, often utilized with a neuro reeducation or balance and coordination billing code, Place the client on top of the PS256 pressure mapping system while he or she is seated on the therapy mat. With the center of mass option on, as you see here, use your hands to position the client in a neutral, symmetrical position. Place the laptop in front of the client on a table and use the rotational feature to rotate the image so it is portrayed as a mirror image of the client. When in a neutral position, the client's center of mass should be positioned as you see here, with the center of mass slightly in front of the ischial tuberosities. Take a small sticker or the corner of a post-it note, any sort of an indicator, and place it on top of this center of mass indicator. While holding the client in a neutral position, after marking the center of mass position, allow the client to revert back to his asymmetrical position, for example, here. Again, while the client is in a nice, neutral, centralized position, take some sort of an indicator, a sticker, uh, a, the corner of a post-it note, and place that indicator on the computer screen on top of the center of mass indicator. Now, allow your client to revert to his asymmetrical position, as you see here. It would appear this client has some left-sided lateral lean, or some left-sided weakness, as evidenced by the shift in the center of mass, as well as the increased pressure under that client's left-hand side. When this occurs, the client's center of mass has shifted, now, instruct the client to reposition themselves back to neutral by using their core muscles to return to that neutral position. As they pull towards neutral, the client's center of mass indicator will move closer to the sticker or the indicator you've placed on the computer screen. Simply encourage your client to line up their center of mass indicator with the sticker you've placed on the screen when they do so, they'll reach a centralized position and they will have returned to more of a neutral position, as was the goal. The center of mass feature may also be utilized to assess a client's self-propulsion capabilities and efficiency. Oftentimes, clients feel as though they're insufficient or subpar in terms of their self-propulsion capabilities. If this is the case, place the client on the PS256 pressure mapping system within his wheelchair. Once this is placed on the pressure mapping system, ask the client to self-propel in an open area. Follow the client with the laptop and the PS256's record movie feature enabled. With the PS256's record feature record movie feature, you can record the client's self-propulsion with the center of mass feature activated. With proper self-propulsion, the center of mass should present with a slight rhythmic bounce like you see here. If your client presents with a front-to-back shift with self-propulsion, as you see here, or with a lateral weight shift, as you see here, two things are happening. Number one, the client is burning way too much energy with self-propulsion as a result of that core or trunk shift, as you see here. Number two, this may be the result of poor drive wheel placement. If it's a lateral shift, it may be a result of wheelchair frame, uh, of the wheelchair frame being too wide. It may be the fact that the client is so hopped up on cushions and pads that they cannot adequately reach the proper self-propulsion range. In short, if you see a greater amount of center of mass bounce than what you see here, a small rhythmic motion, the client may be presenting with poor positioning, 
thus leading to decreased self-propulsion efficiency. Something may, be, may need adjusted with the chair or the seating system. Other billable applications for the PS256 include the incorporation of pressure mapping with weight-bearing activities for muscle firing and neuro ed following hemiparesis, as well as for use with orthopedic patients to assess weight-bearing through a newly operative lower extremity with weight-bearing precautions. For additional details on these specific applications, please contact us via our website, www.pressuremapping256.com. The rotational feature, as previously mentioned, can be used in conjunction with the image selection and freeze frame feature. Oftentimes, cl clinicians will use the PS256 record frame option to record, freeze, and save multiple images for uses with letters of medical necessity, justifications, and medical records. Simply use this feature to produce several images to use as a comparison. For example, take, client, take the client on their current seating system and select the record frame option to get a baseline. Next, try the client on multiple other cushions, taking freeze frame or record frame options during each trial. Within your letter of medical necessity, you may then compare the client's baseline on their existing cushion with the three or four trial cushions that you've attempted to use. You can then use these images and that data to aid in your justification of such equipment. Thank you for visiting Precision Seating Solutions Clinical Applications Tutorial on the PS256 Pressure Mapping System. Be sure to visit our Features Tutorial to review the specific applications of the PS256. For additional details or for more information on today's tutorial, feel free to contact us anytime at our website www.pressuremapping256.com.